Howdy y'all, this is Stephen from Dufresne, and this is All for the Love of Watches. Howdy y'all, Stephen here, and in this episode of For the Love of Watches, um, I wanted to cover some uh, content around the samples or the uh, prototyping process. So in the first episode, I talked about the design process, kind of what I go through when I'm designing the pieces and uh, the different things that uh, inspire them and as well as like kind of how I go from, from you know, getting an idea down onto paper and so forth. Um, and in this episode, I actually want to go through then um, some examples of how or what samples um, look like and, and the iteration that they're in. So I'm gonna use um, the little field, the GMT model, since that's the one that's most, um, I guess the most recent. Um, I've got obviously a lot of different ones. Um, so for those that have seen some of the previous content, uh, the sample from the, uh, the Barton Springs uh, prototype all the way through then the actual Barton Springs uh, in production uh, it changes, it changed quite a bit. Um, so the little field is the latest one. And I think what you'll see in this one is, um, you know, different, uh, I'm sorry, but different case versions. So there's three different cases. You'll see a couple of different dial versions and hopefully it'll give you an idea of like the reasons or the rationale behind, uh, doing these, um, these prototypes or these samples. And for me, it's, it's, it, you know, unfortunately it delays sometimes the actual like launch of the product, but it's important to me to bring the best product I can bring to you, matching the ideas that I have in the design. And so um, sometimes that delay is, is worth it in trying to you know, bring, bring you something that um, you know, hopefully will um, align to what you're, you would want. And so those that are interested in the GMT, the upcoming little field, uh, maybe this one will have even more interest because you'll get to see kind of the, the steps that I went through um, you know, from the get-go. So uh, with that, take a look. I hope you all enjoy it. And um, again, this, uh, this series for the love of watches is just meant to be a little bit deeper dive, a little bit further into the actual like process that I go through, um, you know, from, you know, building the brand and, you know, some of these little stories and just like I said, techniques and processes. So I hope you all enjoy it and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. So as I mentioned here, the uh, changes along the, the kind of prototype sampling process in through production. So here's version one. Like I mentioned, um, not quite exactly what I was looking for. So this particular bezel insert, it's actually an insert. That's not what I was asking for. It's in this uh, black paint, anodized paint. Um, again, not, not what I was asking for, not, not what I thought the design called for, but um, this is, you know, this is why we run samples. The case finish was not accurate. I don't want this brushed. I wanted this polished. Case back's actually pretty close, had the uh, proper stamping and engravings that I was looking for. But, you know, overall, it's an okay design, but not exactly what I was looking for. So then we move to sample or prototype two, and you can see this one's starting to get there. Um, again, not exactly what I was looking for, but this is a full steel bezel instead of it being an insert. Um, and I wanted this to be radial finish, radial brushed finish, instead of polished like that. And again, I wanted the case sides to be polished. So this one was closer, <laughs> not exactly what I was looking for. Um, as well on the uh, original, let me bring that back, you'll see that that is a flat crystal. So the crystal um, for the sapphire crystal is actually flat. And I wanted to adjust that and slightly dome it on the production one. And so a little hard to see. There you go, a little hard to see, but there's a slight dome on the actual sapphire crystal itself. So again, version two. Okay, so version three, now we're talking. So they didn't, you know, just because of timing, I'm trying to get this um, all done by the call it April-ish timeframe. Um, they rushed over a case finish uh, I got to get all this, this back to Switzerland, but they rushed this over. The bezel is now a solid piece. It is finished in this radial brush pattern and it is just sitting on here. So it's a solid piece of stainless steel instead of it being an insert. The uh, crystal is not in this one, but uh, the case is actually finished in the proper 
finishing that I was looking for. So this very high polished finish, it actually makes the case slightly uh, thinner as well. Um, so it's got a better profile uh, with the radial brushed bezel and the case back again, about the same. The, uh, the dome sapphire will be in there. And then the dial has some changes as well. Let me uh, set those aside and then I'll show you what the actual uh, dial changes were as well. Okay, and then on the dial, again, the uh, original version of the, or the first version uh, for the little field, uh, the printing was, was not accurate. It's, it, uh, <laughs> it says that Texas, it's supposed to just simply be uh, Texas edition and shadow black, but nonetheless, that was lost a little bit um, just in the conversations back and forth. But this is the layout of the uh, the dial which i actually liked and i do like the uh um kind of kind of the center chapter ring it's very similar to how i have a lot of other pieces um you know as example here's the chapter ring on the travis um, i kind of wanted to emulate that same look and feel without having the actual applied uh chapter ring milled out markers but it wasn't it just didn't give quite the depth that i was looking for Handsets were great, loved them. The, uh, the loom is fantastic. The applied logo, most of the characteristics are all there, but just wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Um, it's hard to tell on this one, but also the date. Uh, I wanted the date wheel color matched, but I also wanted the print to be red as the, uh, you know, the little field is gonna have red and blue, the same Texas uh, or the same color Pantones as the actual Texas flag. And so I wanted to carry that over, but in a more traditional dial, the black dial, but still have that red um, accent to it. So you can see the chapter ring, uh, well, or lack thereof, is just simply printed on. And when I put this all together, it just didn't quite give it the depth that I was looking for. So carefully set that down and take a look at then version two. And you can see already there's just a lot more call it character and depth on this one. So the chapter ring is actually a beveled, uh, giving it a kind of a deep dish pan appear, appearance. But what it does is it really finishes off when it's inside the case. It makes this dial appear a lot closer to the actual uh, crystal itself. And so it gives it a real, um, you know, finely pin finished and, you know, tight tolerance uh, appearance. So the the print as you can see the little field or maybe you can see is is on there as well as the actual um, date window or the date disc is proper color coded to the blue as well as the red for the actual numbers themselves so the handsets the chain are, are the same the only change is on the actual gmt hand i had to shorten that a little bit change the triangle size just a little bit it's a little larger now than what it was on the original one. Uh, but you can see there's more depth in the dial, more character in the dial, and ultimately I think just a uh, better finished approach. But this is exactly why we do samples. Unfortunately, this is what causes <laughs> delays. The uh, little field is now scheduled to come, you know, into the, uh, uh, you know, April-ish timeframe, and hopefully we'll hit that mark. But uh, this gives you some ideas on how we go from samples or why we go from samples um, you know, a couple different iterations to get to that finished product, which I think everybody's going to really enjoy with the new Littlefield GMT. All right, folks, I hope that was fun for you. Um, if you do have any comments, questions, uh, please drop them below. And then by all means, let me know if there's other things, other parts of uh, kind of uh, my my brand ownership, my brand experience of, of what you'd like to understand or or hear uh, hear about. I would love to hear from you. So. Uh, again, thank you so much for, for supporting the brand. Thank you so much for watching these videos. And I hope that uh, y'all have a great day. And like I said, please do let me know if there's something else you'd like to see. Thanks, y'all.